Hey friends, this is Steve. I'm back. We are looking at paper financial management. We are looking at March, July 2020. The question, La Forge. We are going to go through the theoretical x rights share price exam technique as well as funding a project with debt or equity. So download that past exam question, open up the practice platform. Let us get started. Here's question La Forge, downloaded from the ACCA website. And in the grand scheme of things, this is not the most difficult looking FM question I've ever seen. And we're going to do these two numerical requirements. The verb is calculate. We'll do that in a spreadsheet that they give to us. No need to make a comment. We're going to calculate the theoretical x rights share price, also known as TERP. And then we're going to take the answer from that and get the value of the right per existing share. Okay, that's for four marks. We'll make quick work of that. Then, guys, we're going to move on and we're going to calculate more. Assuming that the investment goes ahead, let's calculate the forecast earnings per share, EPS, for the coming year and the resulting share price, depending on our approach to finance, if we use equity or we use debt. That's for five marks. Guys, this is the question. Go into the ACCA practice platform. I'll put the link below in case you don't have that. And try this question on your own. Pause the video now. When you're all done, Come back and let's compare our work. Welcome back. Let's get started with part A, one and two. Let's be kind to the marking team. Let's label our work. And they know that we're doing TERP. We don't have to tell them that. Now, I like to use a standard template when I am doing theoretical x rights share price. It works just about every time. So I'm going to make a column for the number of shares. I'm going to make a column for the value of one share. Then we can make a column for the total, the number multiplied by the dollar value will give me the, to the total for that row, okay, the product. And now in order to get a theoretical x rights share price, we need to know the current number of shares, then the shares in the rights issue. And with that information, we can calculate TERP. Okay. Now, if we go through the question, we just need to pick out what is there, what is missing, and we use the spreadsheet to fill in the blanks for us. So they tell us that the current share price is $2.60. So let's put it 2.6 right there. That's the current. And we know that there are $35 million on the balance sheet in equity there in ordinary shares. Share price is 0 0.5, 50 cents. So that's going to be equal to 35 divided by 0 0.5. We get the number of shares in issue. Multiply that across. That will be equal to cell C3 multiplied by price there. Okay, let's start plugging in the missing pieces. They tell us that the rights issue share price will be 30% less than the current market value. So all I have to do is multiply the value in D3 multiplied by 0 0.7, right? That's 1 minus 0 0.3. And there we go. Now, there's a little twist in this question. Instead of telling us the ratio of the new shares to the existing shares, they tell us that to complete this project, we need a total amount of 25 million point 48. So we're going to work backwards to get the number of shares that will be issued in this right rights issue. OK, so we need to raise 25.48 million. So if we divide that by the rights issue price, we get the number of new shares. 
Now, to calculate the theoretical x rights share price, I'm going to get the total of the shares afterwards. Uh, use the sum function. Don't be afraid to use any basic function, okay? Functions are allowed. You must know the sum function. You must know IRR. You must know NPV. So now, using relative cell addressing, I just copy, paste right over to there. And the theoretical x rights share price will simply be equal to the market cap after the rights issue divided by the total number of shares in issue. And there we go, 2.47. Let's help the marker find our work. I'm going to bold out that I'm looking for TERP, and I'm going to bold it right here. Guys, there are no marks for financial modeling. There are no marks for spreadsheet skills. There are no marks for formatting. So keep things simple. Move quickly. And let's just be a bit neater. We could show that we are working in some million, right? Guys, that's part A1, made very easy with the spreadsheet tool. Now, let's go down to part A2. And in part A2, we're trying to get the value of the right per share. So let's take this step by step. Let's get the theoretical x rights share price, right? So we get the TERP, which we have from working one. Then we can get the price, the rights issue price. Okay. We subtract one from the other. That would be the value of the right to buy the shares. But now we need to divide it by the number of shares, right? So value per share. Double click on a column separator to auto enlarge it, guys. Now let's use the spreadsheet tool to make it go nice and quickly. We can just refer to that number by its cell address. The next one, the rights issue share price is the 1.82 in cell D4. Okay. Now the value of the right will be equal to the TERP minus the rights issue price. And we have one side working to do here. We need to work out the ratio of new shares to existing shares. So let us park our working over here to the right. We've got lots of space. There are no marks for spreadsheet skills, as I mentioned before, mentioned before. So it doesn't matter where you put it. Working, this will be the ratio of the shares. We can just actually copy this from here. Current, copy, paste. Look at that, right? This is the total number of shares. Copy, copy, paste. That's going to bring in those numbers. What I would like to understand is how many shares do I need to own in order to have the right to buy one more share. So if using a ratio, set that to one, and then that will be equal to the 70 divided by the 14. Five, look at that. So for every five shares, you're allowed to buy one share at the rights issue price. So look at this, that's five. So the value per share, in order to get that 65 cents, we need five shares. So I will divide the 65 cents by the five, and there we go. That is the value per share. Let's move to part B, okay? So let's do part B here. And we want to understand the earnings per share and the share price depending on whether or not we fund with debt or equity. Let me show you my approach. Well, I'm going to make one column for each, okay? Debt or equity. Now, we know the current profit after tax, and they give that to us in the story. That's the 16.56, okay? Copy, paste, okay? Now, if we fund under debt, right, we will get additional operating profit. In both cases, we get that, okay?
and that is 4.5, right? So we can put that into both columns. No matter what happens, we get an additional 4.5 in profit, okay? But that's operating profit, so we have to take out the incremental tax, okay? Now, if we fund with debt, we'll pick up additional interest, okay? We'll plug that in in a moment. Let's make a template. Let's finish out a template here. Then we will have to pay tax, that's incremental tax on the additional profit, right? Tax on additional. Then we will have a revised profit after tax line. And then we have the new number of shares under each approach, we'll have a different number of shares. Then we can get the earnings per share, divide the profit by the number of shares. And we can then get the share price, assuming that P.E. ratio 11%. 11 times, excuse me. Okay, so let's keep cranking, let's keep rocking. So the interest, guys, we're gonna have to borrow how much? So the interest line will be equal to a negative 0 0.06, that's showing the 6% cost, multiplied by the 25.48 million that we need to borrow. 25.48, okay, and there we go. Now, the tax rate is 20%, guys, but remember, interest is a tax-deductible expense, so I will now multiply negative 0 0.2, that's showing the tax rate as a cost, multiplied by the sum of that operating profit and the interest, right? I'm netting the interest off of the additional profit to give me my tax line. Now, profit after tax will be equal to the sum of my existing profit, my additional profit minus the new costs, okay? There we go, 18.94. Now, watch this. There will be no interest if we fund with equity. So I can just copy this cell over here and I'll get a 0 0.9 million in tax. I can cop copy that total over here and we get the 20.16. So the number of new shares, if we fund with debt, that doesn't change. That's going to be 70. And you can pick that up from your working upstairs if you wish. Uh, versus 84, that would be the total number of shares under the rights issue, okay? Guys, we have those right up here, if we needed to grab those, right? There it is, there's the 70, there's the 84, okay? Right there, 70, 84. So the earnings per share will be equal to one divided by the other, that's the profit divided by the number of shares, and that's a 27 cents. We can now do a copy. We can do a paste and put that over there. 24 cents. And the share price at a PE ratio of, of, of 11, we just multiply the earnings per share times 11. Copy, paste, relative cell addressing. I have so much fun doing that. And look at that. We're good. A little bit messy. There are no marks for formatting, but just let's clean this up. It's nice to be professional. These are professional exams. I'm just gonna put those to two decimal places, okay? I can tell the marker that up here we are in millions, right? Okay, and guys, look at that. Answer is looking great. We've made quick work of La Forge. We've got part A done, we've got part B done. Guys, practice that again. Make sure you can do this question in three to four minutes and you will be good to go on your upcoming FM exam. This is Steve signing out. If you found this useful, don't be afraid to throw down a like and tell your friends. Bye for now.